Son, I don't have much time left. It's okay, Dad, I'm here. Before I go, there's something I need to know. Anything, Dad, anything. I need to know, son. Why don't you have NordVPN? What? I mean, seriously, son, are you not aware that without NordVPN, you're leaving yourself exposed to hackers who can track you, stalk you, or sell your information to undesirables? I mean, a VPN is such a basic necessity these days, I really think you're behind the times here. Are you for real? Am I for real? You're the one who's not taking advantage of a service that's easy to use, super fast, has thousands of servers all over the world, and allows you to use one account on up to six devices at once. Like, where's the downside? Dad, I, I really don't care about cybersecurity right now. I know you use streaming services and play video games. Did you know streaming services like Netflix are using geoblocking to only give you certain access to certain shows and movies? And you can actually use NordVPN to get around all that and get access to all the shows and movies that you're already paying for. Plus, you can use it to get access to games and websites you wouldn't normally have access to in your country. You really think now's a good time to talk about this? I I think right now is a perfect time to talk about it considering there's a great deal currently. All you have to do is go to nordvpn.com forward slash mythology guy and you can get a huge deal on a two year plan plus one extra month. And there's a 30 day no risk money back guarantee, meaning no matter what decision you end up making, you get one month of NordVPN completely for free. Seriously, why are you not jumping on this? I really thought I raised you better than that. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll get NordVPN. Does that make you happy? Yes, it does. All right then. By defeating Ares, Kratos, the once mortal warrior, became the new god of war. Kratos, in Greek mythology, was born a god. He didn't become one by defeating another god. Also, he wasn't the god of war. He was the god of power and strength. However, Kratos soon found himself alone on Olympus, shunned by his fellow gods. Kratos was neither alone nor shunned on Olympus. He actually had three siblings on Olympus, Nike, Bia, and Zealous. And because he and his family were the first gods to join Zeus after the Titan War, Zeus actually granted them the highest positions in his regime. He had found a new family in the warriors of Sparta, gaining solace from his past in calling to battle. Enough, Kratos! With every city you destroy, the wrath of Olympus grows. Soon I will no longer be able to protect you. Kratos in mythology was indeed very brutal and merciless and constantly seeking out violence. However, when Kratos committed atrocities, he actually did them in service of Zeus, not in defiance of him. And when he was questioned by other gods, he would openly state that this was the way of Zeus. By the way, fun fact, Athena in this game is voiced by the same woman who voices Athena in Age of Mythology. Nice. For anyone wondering, yes, Zeus does have the ability to strip away someone's godly powers. He's done that to both Apollo and Poseidon at certain points. Creating living statues is more of a Hephaestus thing than a Zeus thing. Also, while the Colossus of Rhodes was an actual thing in history, there are sadly no mythical stories of it coming alive. It'd be totally awesome if there were, but no such luck. Kratos. I do not need your help, Zeus. I can take down this beast. I offer you more than help, Kratos. I offer you power. I offer you the Blade of Olympus. It was this blade that ended the Great War and defeated the Titans. Uh, no it wasn't. 
This blade of Olympus is not a thing in Greek mythology. The Colossus of Rhodes was destroyed by an earthquake, not an epic battle with Kratos. Shocker, I know. The gods are petty and pathetic, and your rule is weak. I grow tired of this insolence. I am the king of Olympus. And it is my way that is the way of the gods. You must vow to forever serve me. I serve no one. Kratos and his siblings actually did pledge their eternal loyalty to Zeus. And as stated before, they did it pretty quickly. As the life drained out of Kratos, the arms of Hades reached out to claim their prize. Kratos dies yet again, and still Hermes doesn't show up to take him to the underworld. Yes, I know Thanatos died between games, but Hermes is still very much alive, so where the heck is he? Death is an escape, Kratos. You are a warrior of Sparta, not a coward. Only a coward accepts death. I am no coward. Once again, Kratos is miraculously able to just will himself back to life, without permission from Hades, or a death cure from Asclepius, or an apple of immortality, or anything, really. Hold up, did this regular mortal man actually survive a blast of godly power from freaking Zeus? Who the hell is this guy? And what of you, my lord? Turn back to Olympus, beast! I must face Zeus! <laughs> The last mortal who tried riding a Pegasus up to Olympus didn't quite get what he wanted, Kratos. Maybe rethink the strategy a bit. Your only hope is to find the Sisters of Fate and travel back through time to the moment Zeus betrayed you. The Sisters of Fate do not have the ability to travel through time. They can manipulate the future, sure, but the past isn't something they can change. To succeed, you will need more help than I can give. My titan brother slumbers deep inside his mountain prison. This titan brother guy is referring to is later revealed to be Typhon. While Typhon was indeed imprisoned under a mountain, he was neither a titan nor Gaia's brother. He was the son of Gaia and Tartarus. The titans were children of Gaia and Uranus. Honestly, Kratos' strategy probably should have included freeing and teaming up with Typhon, considering he nearly took down Olympus on his own. In this game, Typhon and Prometheus are both found at the same mountain, but in mythology, Typhon was imprisoned under Mount Etna, and Prometheus was imprisoned in the Caucasus Mountains. Who has placed you in this torment? You did! Kratos and his sister Bia were the ones tasked with carrying out Prometheus' punishment. Kratos even tortured and mocked Prometheus for his own amusement. As punishment, he made me mortal and condemned me to be savagely consumed every day by this cursed bird. Also, Prometheus says here that Zeus made him mortal, but that didn't happen in the myth. The whole reason his body healed every day was because he was immortal. Something I forgot to mention in the last video, Kratos kills several Gorgons in these games, and yet for some reason he can't take their eyes to increase his health, even though he can do that with the Gorgon eyes he finds in chests. These are all Gorgons, guys. Even if you're still referring to them all as Medusa, those would still be Gorgons. Please, Ghost of Sparta, release me from my torment! I must burn in the fires of Olympus. This is the only way. Kill me, Kratos. Kill me. Prometheus says that the only way to free him from this prison is by burning and killing him. But in the myth, he was eventually freed by Heracles during one of his labors, and he didn't do any of that. He just broke the chains. 
Rhea commanded the eagle to secret her son away. He was taken to an island far beyond the watchful eyes of Kronos. Baby Zeus was not taken to an island by an eagle. Rhea hid him in Mount Ida, where he was taken care of by a goat, a golden dog, and Rhea's servants. The Titans being gigantic is a common misconception. They are actually the same size as the gods, who are usually the same size as humans. Rhea and Kronos are also the same size. If Kronos was truly this much bigger than her, then I shudder to think about how they conceived their children. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. No, some of the Titans went to Zeus's side in the war, and nothing bad happened to them. Well, except Prometheus, but there was a different reason for that. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Apparently it's called a Wild Cerberus, but there is only one Cerberus in Greek mythology, and he is very much domesticated. Kratos kills this siren Black Bolt style by covering its mouth and causing it to explode from the inside. But siren songs do not create shock waves, they simply induce hypnosis. In Greek myth, there were two or three sirens max, but we encounter way more than that in this series. The steeds of time are not a thing in Greek mythology. Fools who try, you would be the last I would expect to seek an audience with the Sisters of Fate. And you are the last one I would expect to become a servant of the Fates. Theseus was never a servant of the Fates. He's really not that kind of guy. Theseus was killed by Lycomedes, not Kratos. By the gods, it is true. I have my way through the guardians of Hades and have my way out of the fires of torment to change my fate. My god, has everyone escaped from the underworld? Hades does not do his job at all in this series. Apparently these little fluttering bird enemies are supposed to be nymphs. These are not nymphs. Nymphs are beautiful humanoid nature spirits, and they certainly aren't explosive. Okay, who let Michael Bay into the design room? Is that a lava rock minotaur? Well, that's cool, but inaccurate. God of War. Jason, that beast took him. Jason was not killed by a knockoff Cerberus. He was actually very anticlimactically killed when the stern of his own ship fell on his head. Uh, the Golden Fleece is not a warrior's pauldron. It is, as the name would suggest, a fleece. This golden fleece has the power to deflect approaching weapons and thrust them back to those who deliver them. Reflecting a Gorgon's gaze does not cause whoever sees the reflection to turn to stone. We know this because Perseus looked at Medusa's reflection in his shield in order to defeat her. Euryle is not that big, and does not have a snake lower body. She and Stheno are actually often depicted with wings. Also, she lives on an island with her sisters, not in an awesome temple filled with booby traps. Also, also, I know a lot of you guys are expecting me to say that Medusa's sisters don't have the ability to turn people to stone, but actually in the older versions of the myths, they do. So, yeah. Are you watching me now, sisters? Give me a sign! Am I? 
The great Perseus to kill this fallen god to receive an audience with you? There's a lot to love about Perseus in this game. He has his Helm of Invisibility, his Reflective Shield, and he's voiced by Harry Hamlin, the actor who played Perseus in Clash of the Titans. Nice. But since we're nitpickers in these videos, Perseus never sought out the fates, he was never slain in battle, he doesn't have his winged shoes, and his sword doesn't seem to be the correct shape. Also, Perseus looks a lot younger than Theseus in this game, which is pretty weird considering Perseus was born about four generations before Theseus. We know this because Perseus is the great-great-grandfather of Heracles, and Heracles encounters Theseus during one of his labors. The shield of Perseus seems to have a Medusa face design on it. That wouldn't be Perseus's shield, that would be Athena's shield. You will never make it across. You think you can, but you cannot. Do you hear me? It's my wings that will make it across. It is my test! Do you not know who I am? Have you not heard of Icarus? Oh, I most certainly have, Icarus, which leads me to ask, how the heck are you so old and how are your wings still in one piece? Did you not fly too close to the sun when you were just a boy and result in your wings falling to pieces and you yourself dying? I imagine that's the exact story you're referencing since that's the only thing you're famous for. This is confusing. Honestly, it would have made a lot more sense if this was a crazy old Daedalus who was trying to get the sisters to bring back his son. Breaks my chains of torment. Atlas does not reside under the earth holding it up. He holds up the sky in a lush green area near the Hesperides tree. The war between the Titans and the Olympians forged the landscape of the mortal world. Hades is wearing his helmet here, and yet it is not turning him invisible. A swim. Atlas does not have four arms. Also, he seems to have no genitalia here, which is a bit weird considering he has produced children in mythology. I'm not saying I want to see that, I'm just saying, Atlas ain't no Kendall. Hades does not have his bident, Poseidon does not have his trident, and Zeus does not have his master lightning bolt. These weapons were given to the gods specifically for use in the Titan War. The ashes of the phoenix. Only fire will set him free. Wait, but in order to become ash in the first place, a phoenix bursts into flames. It should have already been reborn from the ashes. Why would it need more fire to be reborn from the ashes that resulted from it lighting itself on fire? Zeus! Is this how you face me, coward? I am through doing the bidding of the gods! Come down here and face me now, Zeus! The game refers to this creature as the Kraken, which is another common misconception ever since the Clash of the Titans movie. In Greek myth, this creature is actually called Cetus. The Kraken is a Norse sea monster. If you relent, Zeus will torment you still. He will not rest knowing you live. And when you die, his brother Hades will see that your soul is tortured for all eternity. Will he, though? He's already let me out of the underworld twice, along with my rival and thousands of undead creatures. It's not like he can pass that job off to the Furies since they died in a prequel game. I really don't think we need to worry about Hades doing literally anything. Cetus was killed by Perseus, not Kratos. Also, how come we couldn't just use the Gorgon head to turn it to stone, seeing as that's exactly what Perseus did? We've been expecting you. Out of my way. Your resolve is admirable. Even if it is misguided. None can change their destiny, Kratos. We sisters determine the fate of all. It was I who deemed that the Titans lose the Great War. And I, who have allowed you to come this far. It is not your destiny to kill Zeus. You no longer control my destiny. She doesn't? How? You never gave any reason why she wouldn't. I mean, the fates constantly control the fates of all beings. Why would they even let him come this far if they don't want him to win? Why don't they just cut his thread? Are they unable to because he died and then he came back? That was never said. 
and they still almost change his fate during his fight with them. Also, was his thread cut and then glued back together two separate times? Oh, this is by far the most confusing plot point in the whole series. Plotto weaves the thread of life for every mortal god and titan. The fates in this game have some... <laughs> interesting designs, which are quite different from their usual ones. Zeus and Athena bleed red blood in this game, even though the deities in Greek mythology are supposed to have golden ichor running through their veins. You cannot do this, Kratos! Athena's main weapons are supposed to be a spear and a shield. She does typically have a sword at her hip, but not dual swords. A fear that drove Zeus to kill you. His own son. His son. Praetus is not a son of Zeus, despite how common that condition is. His father is Pallas, the titan of battle. We have faced far worse than this one fallen mortal. Here, we see Zeus's throne all by itself, when it is supposed to be surrounded by the other eleven thrones of Olympus. Also, no hearth of Hestia? How dare you. Hestia is bestia. Gaia is the living personification of the entire Earth itself, so if she wants to get to the top of Mount Olympus, why doesn't she just manifest herself there instead of climbing up the tedious way? Hello, hope you enjoyed that video. Ever since the God of War 1 video, there's been an insane amount of requests for God of War 2, so here we are. Thank you for 700k subscribers. The growth on this channel has been kind of insane, and I'm very grateful for it, so I'm happy to give you guys what you request as a thank you for it. Though, of course, videos like this would not be possible if it weren't for the Patreon supporters who have, well, made videos like this possible. Redundant, but let's thank those wonderful people. Crash, Lilith Jade Vaughn, Sage Ty, Gilda Ramos, Larakia, Christopher D. Samson II, Anthony Miano, CJ the Boy, Gina Adams, Justin Brown, Mark Neisler, Matthew Owen, Darkling, Gavin Lothar, Justin Pruett, Mitchell Reagan, Spicy Chai, Toby T, Zaggard, Adam, Anna, Biogeek932, Bloody Sovi, Kane Kendrick, Clear Krill E. Dara, Dan, Dominic Fournier Bessner, Habalon, Jeff Jeffington, Cade, Lamont Stewart, Lassie Ehrenreich, Malice, Maria Potter, Miranda Annette, Mitchell Omen, Muhammad Al Dobson, Orthus, Riley McGee, Robert Ray, Stefan Platon, Sunsinger, Taylor A.W. Maple, Travis Warren, Walker Gailey, whoops, Aggie, and Mag's story. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Thanks so much. Looking forward to the next big special. So long.